Russia's President Vladimir Putin has inaugurated a train line connecting the Crimean Peninsula to mainland Russia across the Crimean Bridge. Putin took a ride on the train during the opening ceremony of the railway bridge across the Kerch Strait. The train connects mainland Russia and Ukraine's annexed peninsula for the first time. The railway section of the bridge marks its expanded use after Putin opened the connection last year. The bridge cost 3.7 billion US dollars and is Europe's longest bridge surpassing the Vasco da Gama Bridge in Portugal. The segment from Moscow to the peninsula's capital city, Simferopol, is over 2,000 kilometers long, which takes around 33 hours to traverse. The US and the European Union have condemned Russia's construction of the bridge, calling it a violation of Ukraine's sovereignty. And the Western powers have even imposed sanctions on the firms associated with the building of the 19-kilometer long structure. Crimea is connected to the mainland in Ukraine only. So the bridge is the sole link between the peninsula and Russia. Ukraine has condemned the project not only for violating the nation's sovereignty and territorial integrity, but also for its low clearance, which has restricted the maritime shipping traffic for Ukraine. Now, the spokesperson of uh, the European Union foreign policy, Chief Federica Mogherini, at the time said that the construction of the bridge constitutes another violation of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity by Russia. The U.S. State Department also condemned Russia's construction of the bridge, saying it was done without the permission of the government of Ukraine. Russia had seized and annexed Ukraine's Crimean Peninsula in the year 2014, but the annexation has not been recognized by the world community. Syria's offensive in Idlib continues to gather steam, displacing tens of thousands of people. In the latest update from the front lines, Bashar al-Assad's army is gaining considerable ground in the northern part of Syria. They've captured dozens of villages since the operation began last week. Syrian artillery fire, backed by airstrikes, has broken the back of the rebel fighters in Idlib. There are widespread reports of Russian and Syrian jets indiscriminately bombing civilians, even in hospitals. Another flashpoint could be the Turkish outposts in Idlib. Twelve of these were established as per the 2018 agreement brokered by Russia. But now Syrian groups claim to have surrounded one such post of the Turkish army. The United Nations has also stepped in now. Secretary General Antonio Guterres has called for an immediate ceasefire. The UN reminded all parties of their obligation to protect civilians. For the past three days, some 39 communities were reportedly impacted by shelling in northern Hama, southern Idlib and western Aleppo governorates, while 47 communities were reportedly struck by airstrikes. The newly displaced adds to the over 400,000 women and children and men that have been displaced as a result of hostilities since the end of April. Many of them have been displaced multiple times. The operation has triggered a mass civilian exodus and their destination is Turkey. Humanitarian agencies in Turkey estimate that close to 120,000 Syrians are marching towards the Turkish border, but their movement has been hampered by incessant bombing by Russian and Syrian warplanes. Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has made it clear that he will not handle a new wave of immigrants. And so Turkey dispatched a delegation to Moscow to try and dissuade Russia from continuing the offensive. Russia has supported President Bashar al-Assad in his fight against the rebel forces, while Turkey has traditionally sided with the rebels. But with 3.7 million refugees already living in Turkey, Erdogan says he is in no position to welcome more people. Our next report gets you more.